Welcome to your daily devotional reading. Good morning, beloved. This is your sis Sandy Edwards with M. a medical missionary. Happy Sabbath, you guys. This is the most wonderful day of the week. Let's bow our heads for prayer this morning. Oh, gracious Father, you've brought us through the week, Lord, and we're at the end of it. It's like the dessert of the week, Lord. We've dealt with so many different things, and today we can enjoy the dessert. We thank you, Father, for touching us this morning to wake us up. You're so gracious and merciful. Thank you, Father, for seeing us through another day into a better, better day, which is your holy Sabbath. Help us, Lord, to keep it holy unto thee. And please, Father, wash us in the blood of Jesus. Plunge us in it. Soak us. Then fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we could walk with you, talk with you. We could see through your eyes and do the things that you do, only to give you the glory and honor. Father, we thank you for everything. So many things that we could just sit here and talk about. It'll take us forever. So many things we can praise you for that would take us even more into eternity. But for now, Father, we just give you all the grace, all the mercy, all the power and glory. And this day, take over our lives, we who love you with all our hearts, souls and mind. Take over this day and lead us the way you want us to go. And I thank you, Father, for being with all those that have been ill, that are coming out of it. Continue, Father. In Jesus' name, and I pray for all those that are looking unto you for strength and help and direction. And I thank you for doing that already. And I pray, Lord, for everything that we ask you for. As for our group, I pray that you keep us strong, Lord, and send us more workers that can help us, Father. Send your spirit into their minds and hearts and let them know. You know who they are. Reach them, Father, and tell them that you need them in the, in the field to harvest. I thank you, Father, for answering my prayer this morning. And please keep the blood of Jesus over us and keep your angels with us, Lord, to not only guard us, but to tell us the things that we should know, that we should remember. And Father, we thank you for everything now and more so later because you've promised us so much when Jesus is coming. Oh, Lord, we can't wait till that day but we must help us to do what we have to do here and to do it wonderfully perfect because you said, be ye perfect even as you are. And you also told us, Lord, to live without sin. Help us to do that, Father, in the presence and in the glory and all the power that you have. Keep us close to heaven this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is December the 23rd, and I'm reading from You Shall Receive Power by Sister Ellen White, and the title is A Pillar in God's Temple, and today's scripture is Revelations 3, verse 12. It may seem wonderful to us that Christ should reveal himself to John as he is, strange that he should thus address himself to the churches, but we should remember that the church, enfeebled and defective though it is, is the object of Christ's supreme regard. Constantly he watches over it with tender solicitude and strengthens it by his Holy Spirit. We will, as members of his church, allow him to impress our minds and to work through us to his glory. Will, he, will we heed the messages he addresses to the church? Let us determine to be among the number who shall meet him with joy at his coming and not among those who shall wail because of him. Revelations 1.7 Let us make certain our redemption by obeying the messages that he gives us to his church. Us, his church. 
Christ bears to the church the words of consolation. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temper, temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Revelations 3, 10 through 12. Let us strive to obtain an abundant entrance into the kingdom of our Lord. And let us diligently study the gospel that Christ came in person to present to John on the Isle of Patmos, the gospel that is termed the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Pass. Revelation 1, 1. Let us remember always that blessed is he that re readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. That's verse 3 of Revelations 1. This is found in Signs of the Time. Revelation, I mean, this is found in Signs of the Times, February the 4th, 1903. You guys, there's a group of people that will be ready when Jesus comes. And the Bible considers them the 144,000. Now think of it. Out of all the millions and billions of people in this world 144,000 is a very small fraction of it and that means those people that are really getting ready they're really giving their hearts their time their energy their their love to the creator of the world and they will be willing to do anything for him to please him and that also means to stand up against all odds to stand up against traditions, to stand up against hatred and misunderstandings and all kinds of different things. You know, we will, I like to put myself in that group because I am striving to be a part of the 144,000. We will, in God's strength, in Jesus' power, be able to make it. But we can't do anything on our own, remember that. It's like you're holding on to a most powerful engine and there's these grips for you to hold on and your body's flying like a, a flag in the wind. You have to hold on tight. You cannot let go. And as your effort to hold on tight, he will hold you. But if you're letting go, he's going to let you go because if you don't want to hold on tight, he's not going to force you to. So you got to hold on with all you have, all your little energy. And with his powerful energy, he won't let you go. You have to want to be saved. I pray that you will be in Christ alone. Okay? I'm going to bring you a special song this morning. And it's going to be called Redeemed. It's the second redeem. There are two redeems. The one I like has a melody of a waltz. Like you could dance the waltz. It has that beautiful melody to it. And that's the one I'm going to sing this morning. And I want to bless you with it. And if you know it, sing along with me. I think it's 338 in the hymnals. And um, find it and sing with me. And I'm going to set the music up for it right now. In the meantime, remember that the Lord loves you. He always has. He always will. And even if you don't want to be saved, that doesn't take His love from you. Because God is love. He can't do more than that. He, he is love. And I pray that this song helps you to draw closer to Him and Jesus. And that your spirit and their spirit would join in together. And that you'll be strengthened for today. Not only for just now, but for all the week that we're going to go through again until we reach Sabbath again. Sabbath is our gas station for our hearts, for our bodies, for our souls. And if you don't stop to get filled up on this day, you're going to really have a rough time during the week because you need this energy and strength and this fuel 
from heaven, okay? All right, I found the song, and I'm going to play it, and we can sing together, okay? I have not sung with it before uh, with the music, so if I mess up a little bit, this is it on my phone. Um, I haven't sung with it. I didn't practice with it. I just like to go with the flow, and I pray that the Lord will work this out, okay? So let's do it. And um, we're going to um, give God the glory. Okay, here we go. I'm going to sing three verses. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, His child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of Him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent, His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, His child and forever I am. Verse 4. I know I shall see in His beauty the King in whose law I delight, who lovingly guarded my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, his child and forever I am. God bless you all and keep you on this beautiful Sabbath day. I pray that you receive a blessing from his hands. And I, I pray that you receive an even more of his love in his arms. Stay close to him today. Learn of him. Learn of Jesus and, and practice his presence in front of him. You know what, guys? Let's practice after Jesus. You know how little kids follow their dads and moms to try to do everything they do and walk in their footsteps or try to walk in their shoes and the shoes are pretty big? Let's do that with them today. We're little. We're very tiny. In fact, we're specked on this earth compared to the universe and compared to their size and their, their ability to control the whole universe at one time. So... As you think about that, remember, He sees you, He knows your name, He knows where you live, He knows what you're going through, and give that to Him, because He knows that, and what we need to know is that He is watching over us, He is taking care of us, and even when we're not that good, He still gives us the rain and the sunshine, He gives us the fresh air outside. He gives us water. He feeds us. He shelters us. So when you know this and you're giving your heart to the Lord, acknowledge this and let Him know that you love Him. Let Him know because He loves you. And that's the least we can do is tell Him we love Him and show it by our actions. Help others. When you're out there, even inside the house, help others when they need help. When you're outside, you see somebody drop something, help them pick it up. If someone needs a ride, Give them a ride. If someone needs money, help them if you can buy the thing that they need. And and then it's a, if, give smiles. You know what? Smiles are powerful. Smile, because a smile goes a long way. 
a person may be feeling really, really rough. And just a smile can turn it around and bring a sparkle into their hearts. So do that, okay? This is what Jesus would do. Do what Jesus would do. And if push come to shove, I'm not going to tell you guys to go out there and get killed. But push come to shove, you see a baby's about to walk out in the street and there's a fast car coming. Save that child's life. The Lord will save yours. That's an extreme, but I'm just saying that's how much we should be just like Jesus. Not to think of ourselves, but to think of others, okay? You guys have a wonderful Sabbath day, and we will meet again tomorrow, if that's God's will. And you take care of yourselves, and remember, love each other. And we here at M12, I love you in Christ alone. Take care, guys. Bye for now. Happy Sabbath. Thanks for listening. God bless.